Hi, it's Steve. In this video, we'd like to discuss why your front load washer doesn't spin. We'll look at some of the components that may cause this symptom, where they're located, and how to test them. Now, one of the most common reasons why your front load washer won't spin is due to a no drain condition. If the pressure switch inside of the washer does not detect no water in the tub, it won't allow it to spin. So you want to check that out first, make sure that all of the water has been drained from the tub. And if there's difficulties with that, check out our video on why your front load washer won't drain. Once we've eliminated the drain issue as the problem, we can then move on to the next most logical component, which is the door lock switch. Now, all front load washers use a locking mechanism to ensure that the door is locked, closed during the spin cycle. Typically this happens right at the very beginning of the wash cycle to ensure that it stays locked throughout the whole cycle. The door lock assembly consists of a door switch, some type of a locking mechanism that is typically controlled by either a solenoid or a wax motor, and then a door lock switch. The door lock switch gets activated only when the door is actually in a locked position, not necessarily when it's just closed. If this component fails, the control board will sense that and will not allow the washer to go into a spin cycle. So first of all, verify that the door will not open during the cycle. If it does, you can safely assume that the door lock assembly is the problem. If the door is locked, we can then move on to the next step. Now most front load washers today have self-diagnostics built into the controls. You may have already noticed a fault code show up in the display on your washer. If not, you can actually run that through a diagnostic mode and that will identify any potential failures of components and a fault code should show up in the display. There is technical information packed with your product. It's typically located behind the lower access panel at the front or in underneath the main top. This may help you in determining what component we should suspect as being a cause of your problem. And in this case of a no spin, you may see a door lock failure. You may see a fault code for a motor control board or a motor control unit. And you may also see a fault code indicating a problem with the main control board itself. Any of those three components can cause a no spin condition. Now if our fault codes suggest a potential problem with the motor control board, we'll need to locate that. As mentioned, it's typically located on the bottom of the washer, either left or right side, so we'll need to remove the lower access panel and locate the housing that that control board is located in. Once we've gained access to that, we first check the wire harness connections to that motor control unit to verify that they're in good condition, and if not, we'll need to replace the motor control board as a complete unit. This is a typical motor control board or motor control unit from a front load washer. Now once we've removed that, we'll first of all check for any signs of corrosion around the input and output terminals. If there's nothing evident there, you can also pop that board out of that housing and we'll further inspect the back side of it to see if there's, again, any signs of corrosion or arcing. If so, we'll definitely need to replace that control board. Now, even though there is no visible damage to that motor control unit, it does not mean that it is functioning properly. To determine whether this component is at fault, you will need to run the diagnostic cycle that is generated by the main control board. Although not as common, the next component to suspect for a no spin condition is the main control board. It's typically located in underneath the main top, either located along the side panel or towards the back. The user interface control is the control board that we see at the front. If you're able to start a cycle and it will go partially way through, you can safely assume that the user interface control is working properly. So next we'll want to access that main control board as well as the troubleshooting information packed with your product to initiate a diagnostic cycle to help us identify whether our problem is with our main control board or with one of the other components. So before we begin our diagnostic cycle, the first thing we'll do is check the connections between our main control board and our motor control unit located at the base of the washer. 
Using the wiring diagram pack with the product, we've identified two harness connectors and verified that both are nice and secure and there's no signs of any arcing or corrosion. We would also check those at the motor control unit as well. And if we're satisfied that the connections are proper, we'll then begin our diagnostic cycle. Thank you so much for watching. We certainly hope that this was helpful to you. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.